Hello, my dear friends, and welcome to Dr. Monkey, where we laugh together and cry together, but hopefully take something away to treat each other a little better. Here's some interesting stories. One about a crazy woman who saved OP from marrying her daughter. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Here we go. I can finally air my uncensored frustration about the night my engagement was single-handedly corrupted by my entitled mother-in-law. Let's call her Ellen, because she always reminded me of Ellen DeGeneres, even before all this recent news broke. Okay, so my girlfriend and I were really engaged to be engaged. We'd both agreed we wanted to get married, but I hadn't done the formal proposal yet because... We wanted to meet each other's families first. Neither lived nearby. I always thought the old trope about meeting the in-laws being a big fiasco was a myth, both because I was younger and more naive then, and because I'm lucky to have easy parents. My girlfriend met them for a few hours. Once we were alone, just me and them, I told them my intentions and my mom asked, does she have any kids already? And my dad asked, does she have a good solid job? And they both asked, do you really love her? And that was that. I had their full support for the marriage. I thought meeting her parents would be the same. Some grilling was to be expected. But as long as I was honest and respectful, it would all be fine. Relevant fact, they had my girlfriend when they were teenagers. By surprise. So, now had a do-over daughter. Their words, not mine. Who was just six years old. My girlfriend and I made the trip up to their city, and I met them for the first time over dinner at a steakhouse. It was pretty upscale, and we'd scheduled the dinner for 8 p.m., so I was surprised to see they'd brought the kid along with them. I met everyone at once, and the initial awkwardness settled once we'd sat down. We were making great small talk when the six-year-old said she was thirsty. No big deal, right? Well, all of a sudden, Ellen starts screaming, Water! 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 A waiter came rushing over to see what the commotion was, and without even making eye contact with the poor guy, Ellen went, We've been here forever, and no one's even gotten us any water. My daughter's been asking. We had been sitting there for 15 or 20 minutes without service, but they were visibly behind, and there were no circumstances that would have warranted that shouting. I should have realized from how unfazed everyone else at the table was that I should be bracing myself for a long night. But I couldn't imagine what was to come at that point. The waiter rushed over with water and apologized for the delay, explaining a few very large parties had come in all at once. The guy seemed sincere and quite affable, so I thought the water would just be an anomaly in an otherwise pleasant night. Then Ellen kicked into full gear. We need the kid's menu, she informed the waiter. He said they didn't have a kid's menu, but the chef could simplify most dishes. What do you mean you don't have a kid's menu? Ellen replied in total disbelief, as though he'd said they didn't have a fire exit. He explained they didn't get too many child visitors and that there were enough plain foods on the menu that no separate menu had ever been necessary. Ellen sighed dramatically and waved him away, literally without saying a word waved him off from the table. I tried to give him an apologetic glance, but understandably, he didn't look back our way. I was so glad the poor guy left, and didn't have to be subjected to her anymore. Meanwhile, she turned her attention to me, and I almost wished he'd come back. At least he was getting paid to be there. She was like, So, you're a screenwriter? And I explained, Well, yes and no. I want to be but it's a hard job to get in that field that you can support yourself on, so I'm working at a non-profit right now. There's a screenwriting component to the job, though, so I'm really happy to be there. Ellen turned to her six-year-old and went, Hear that, hon? You want to be sure to snag a man who works for profit. Learn from this. It's not too late for you. I couldn't tell if she was trying to be funny or not, so I just let it pass looking over to my girlfriend to see if she was even considering speaking up on my behalf. No. The waiter came back, visibly nervous. That hurt, because he was so relaxed and personable at the start of the meal. He asked if we liked to hear the specials before we ordered, and Ellen said, sure. Here's how that went. Waiter, 
First, we have a lightly stirred strip stick. Ellen. Next! Waiter. Oh, um. Oh, okay. Uh, then we have a boiled leg of grass fed. Next! Um. Okay. Um. We have a pasta primavera mixed with. Next! And on and on until he'd gone through all seven or ten specials. Even though she ultimately ordered off the menu. A plain ribeye well done. She tried to order her daughter the same, but the kids said she just wanted plain mashed potatoes. So, Ellen let her get mashed potatoes alone for dinner. Then she sent the waiter away. The rest of us hadn't even ordered yet, and everybody else just sat there like it was entirely normal. I waited for someone to say something thinking it was more her older daughter's, my girlfriend's place, or her husband's, but no one did. I couldn't help myself. I, uh... Was the one steak and potatoes going to be for all of us, or... My girlfriend explained, in the tone you'd used for a tourist violating a sacred local taboo. My mom always has the waiter put the kids' food in first, so it can get started right away. We'll order once the kitchen has hers. I thought she was joking. Since Ellen didn't just order her kids' food, she also ordered her own dinner, too. So I laughed. Something funny? Ellen asked. Then I realized she was serious, and I shut up. Thankfully, her dad at least recognized what was normal for them might not be as regular to me, and tried to lighten the mood with a change of topic. But not even ten minutes after we'd ordered, I guess technically five after we'd ordered, ten minutes after she and her daughter had ordered, Ellen started in again. Another table that had been there long before we were, got a side order of mashed potatoes with their meal. Ellen threw a total carnipsion fit. She was sputtering so inaudibly that none of us could figure out what was wrong at first. Finally, she managed to flag down some busboy who barely spoke English and began laying into him like he just sideswiped her on the freeway. He kept trying to explain he wasn't a server and he could go get one but she wouldn't stop to breathe long enough for him to find someone who could actually help. All the while, I kept looking at my girlfriend for signs of embarrassment, or at least irritation. But you wouldn't have known if she was even hearing any of this. Our waiter came over, somehow still feigning a smile despite knowing what he was walking into. And Ellen actually goes, Why did that table get mashed potatoes and ours haven't come yet? The waiter kindly concisely explained, well, ma'am, those people had ordered potatoes before your party had placed your order. Ellen looks at the man dead in the eye, finally, and says, Well, it doesn't matter when they ordered it. My daughter is the youngest one here. Her food should come out first. You could tell the waiter was working hard to restrain himself at this point. He explained it was a first-come, first-serve policy, and age didn't help one way or another. He offered to go back and check on the potatoes. Ellen agreed. Amar specifically said, Yeah, you better. But I was clocking him. And he went right back to his service station. Because we had only just ordered a few minutes ago. Three or five more minutes passed, during which we could have no other discussion at the table, except how awful this restaurant was. How hungry the poor baby was, who hadn't said a word about being hungry this whole time. I was contently playing her loud iPad game, without headphones, disturbing all the other diners around us, and how America has lost all respect for motherhood because it's just me, me, me culture now. I chimed in. I'm with you on that last part, and to my utter shock, instead of laughing at my joke, my girlfriend seemed annoyed with me. So, after a few minutes, the waiter comes back and says the potatoes will be out very soon. Ellen then goes and does something that, again, I thought was just a myth. She took three singles and a five out of her wallet and put them on the table in full view of the waiter. Then she took one single away and said, Every table I see getting potatoes before us is a bill gone. I was absolutely mortified. The waiter, to his unending credit, just took a deep breath and said, I don't have control over the order in which the kitchen fires tickets, but what I can tell you is that it should be out any minute, and left without saying anything disparaging. I had been holding my tongue all night as well, in the name of my relationship, 
but once the tip hit the table, the $8 tip for a $100 bill on top of all else, I figured if my girlfriend was half the woman I thought she was when, then she wouldn't mind my speaking up at this point. If anything, she'd be supportive, right? So, I scooted my chair back a bit and said, Listen, I know what you're doing with the cash on the table, but that kind of thing makes me really uncomfortable, and it's just not called for. Please put the money away, or we can just continue this some other time. My girlfriend's dad spits back, What? How cheap do you have to be to not believe in tipping service workers? Before I could process whether he was serious or yanking my chain, Ellen chucked me with, No, you know what? You're right. This isn't necessary. I should have known better than to be relieved. She folded the bills back into her wallet, patiently waited for the next plate of mashed potatoes to be carried out, and when it wasn't delivered to us, it was a very common side dish at this place, a steakhouse. She went right up to the stranger's table and picked it up off their table. She half explained something about her daughter starving to death as she was walking away with the stranger's food. But unsurprisingly, that wasn't convincing enough for them. The old lady she took it from followed her right over to our table and tried to take it back. I was already searching for my coat tag in preparation to go, but a shoving match was beginning to unfold between Eldon and the elderly lady with a tennis ball walker. And far be it from me, to sit through all that had happened, only to leave just as the night was getting interesting. The elderly woman was like, Give me back my potatoes! Who are you? And the poor little girl was like, Mommy, it's okay. Don't take someone else's potatoes. But it all fell on deaf ears. Ellen yelled at the old lady, How could you sit there and eat these when my daughter hasn't even been served yet? She's sitting here hungry, just a little girl. And you're over there stuffing your face. Come on, other potatoes will be out any minute. And the old lady, God a lover, was like, great, if they'll be out any minute, then what's the freaking problem? To which Ellen still found polier than thou ground, grasping language, please. Finally, the waiter, and this time someone higher up as well, I think the manager, thank God, came over to separate them as they had begun to raise their voices and cause a disturbance. Staff had already asked Ellen to turn down her daughter's iPad multiple times without heat, and I'm guessing the waiter informed management about the tip on the table. Stunt, she pulled, because this was their final straw. They told us we were going to have to leave the restaurant. But we don't even have our food yet, Ellen complained to the guy. This was clearly not the manager's first radio. You can take the food that's already been served, free of charge. Everything else will be cancelled. Please leave immediately. The old lady didn't miss her chance to knock the potatoes right onto the floor, so we couldn't try to take them with us. Nothing else had been served yet, so we had to leave without any food. When my girlfriend and I were finally alone in our car, she said, Can you believe that? And I said, Not at all. And I really can't believe you didn't warn me. And she went, How could I have known about any of that? And confused, I asked, is she not usually like that? Even more confused than me, my girlfriend asked, Who? Your mom. Then she said, What's my mom got to do with the terrible service at this place? That was the beginning of the end of our relationship. The fact she didn't see anything wrong with her mom's behavior, and that I'd be marrying into that situation, shook me too deep. We both dodged a bullet in more ways than one. In hindsight, we were right for each other regardless of who our family was. Her mom saved us both a lot of time and heartache, helping me realize in one night what could have probably taken us years otherwise. Within a month, we'd moved into a separate apartments and gone on a break. That ended up lasting forever. I'm not sorry I won't see you again, Alan. I am sorry any waitstaff ever will, though. I know people confront different personalities when they're with or without their families. But good lord, dude! You should have sent Ellen flowers for saving you from that level of misery. Or at least a bag of potatoes and a dollar bill bouquet. That whole family has a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome. They have seen this Ellen's behavior so often, they are no longer faced by it. Worse, she probably lashed out at the family so often when calling her out 
that they became mute when watching yet another episode of it. Yeah, the girlfriend would have caused a lot of heartache if you stayed together, given what your family is like. Story 2. Background. I volunteered somewhere similar to the YMCA to meet my graduation volunteer requirements. For the rest of my story, I'm going to call it work because it is work, while some of my age are getting paid in money. Another thing is, I promised my mom I'd cook more this summer, because however will I find a husband if I can't cook every dish known to man? I only agreed because she said I couldn't work or volunteer this summer if I didn't. Anyways, on to what happened. My hours are from 10.30 to 4, so I figured it would be best for me to come home, shower, then make dinner. The first day was fine, but when I came home on the second day, my mom was annoyed. She didn't even say hello before she scolded me for not making any food that day. I told her I would after I go shower. She asked what I expected my family of seven, including me, to eat while I was gone. I was dumbfounded as there are four able-bodied adults in this home who could cook food or order it. Plus, there was a bit of leftovers in the fridge, not to mention snacks. I asked her what she wanted me to do about that since I couldn't leave work early. She told me, I should just wake up before my shift and cook for the family. Now, I was angry. I told her that was ridiculous, and that I was a teen, not a mom, and I shouldn't have to wake up early and make food for us, not to mention when $5 fell out of my pocket at work and I needed lunch, she told me to fast, diet, it won't kill you. So I didn't eat anything for my five and a half hour shift. She told me that this was only to prepare me for the future from when I had my own family, husband and kids to cook for. Funny, as she didn't do this for my brother, even though he's going to college after the summer and so his future family is closer than mine. Then I said the very thing from her nightmares. Well, thanks for showing me because I now don't want a husband and kids if this is how I have to suffer. She screamed not to say that because it might make me infertile. And she said, I don't care. I was then yelled at for saying that. Oh, and by the way, the whole time I was crying a bit from stress. What a crazy, unreasonable expectation of a 15-year-old. I find it difficult to believe that nobody could eat anything until you came home from work. If you wish to cook, it should be according to your schedule, not your mother's wrongful expectations. She sounds horrible. I'm so sorry, and she's not setting a proper example for you. Well, guys, that's all for today. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, I'm going to link it right here. The story's about how EM feels cheated out of her inheritance. His mom goes really crazy when OP takes it back. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you next time on Dr. Monkey.